All right. I forget how much I like Dune. Um, seriously, this is... Playing this again was a, a wonderful rediscovery. I had stopped playing it solo very much because it had gotten so many plays in, in my previous... Long, long ago, I got more and more into only playing war games in XX Solitaire, and then uh, now I'm kind of revisiting all my, my games. And this was always one that was hard to play Solitaire, primarily because of the combat wheel, but also because of the card play. The fact that you got to keep track of all these cards, some of them are kind of interactive, you have have to be paying attention. We, you saw it in, if you watched my playthrough that I made a couple of conditions where I didn't play something that maybe I should have. But I did learn the thing I really wanted to see, which was Spice Harvest and the Duel don't ruin the game. <laughs> uh, what did ruin the game, I think, was Spice Harvest and the Duel with a player who didn't really want to play. And my suspicion is that Dune is one of those games where you want a group of people who all want to play, want to optimize their winning, and are not trying to end the game as soon as possible, which was the case. Now, the player I had was not trying to end the game without a victory. He wanted to win, but he was willing to take greater risks at getting knocked out of the game, uh, at allowing other people advantages in several games. This was one player throughout a period of you know, maybe five to six years of a few plays. We didn't play it much. However, playing this reminded me of the few earlier playings that I had had opposed and how much fun those were. Uh, this is really, you know, I think one of the better multiplayer, non-war game type things, uh, even if it has a lot of direct conflict in it. It had such innovative systems for its time, that, and, and I haven't seen anything quite similar to them. And you can look to the same design groups, some of their other games, one in particular, Cosmic Encounter. As a good comparison to this, Cosmic Encounter, its initial ideas were very, very clever. But in a sense, playing Cosmic Encounter without a lot of expansions is a really dull experience after you've uh, played it a couple of times. It, yeah, there's some randomness in there, there's some deal making that's uh, focused by the game, but it just doesn't fall the way this does. And, and, and Dune really, you know, always puts you into this position where everything's almost intuitive. You understand, I got these space, and I looked at uh, Mercator Rex or whatever, and the board itself is enough to turn me off of the idea of that. The intuitive board of Dune, you know, it's your simple area, area con uh, movement type system. It all kind of works well. It's not little tubes connecting dots or whatever <laughs> Mercator Rex has. Uh, and, and right away that would help me a great deal. Certainly being set in Dune, I mean, that generated the flavor. So some kind of game that tries to use these same mechanics and make up its own universe isn't going to grab you intuitively the same way Dune does, but I'll tell you this much, I've introduced this game to people who had never read the books, never understood any of it, yet it's still easy because it's got area control, it's got simple objectives, i got to control three of these five or whatever. It's got some opportunity for uh, alliances, but it's limited. Games that freely allow you to ally, and there were a lot in this era, uh, allow you to transfer goods, territories, whatever, at will, tend to feel a little too freewheeling. This one provided you with a constraint which said, yeah, you can win, but within, you know, and, and you can work together to win, but within certain constraints that work very well to direct the play and put you in a position where it's not just some... Uh, first of all, the fact that multiple people can win is very cool. Uh, because it's a very hard game to win alone. Um, but also, the, the, uh, 
the constraints on what you can transfer and everything make it much harder for you to completely utilize an alliance's power. You can't shift the money all to the guy who's attacking. You can help him out by giving him money for his landings or for him to purchase uh, treachery cards, but you can't uh, completely allow the money to transfer in a way that, say, one player's in a position where, hey, we both win as an alliance if you win this battle, so I'm going to give you everything at that moment. You have to make the decision to support them earlier, when it's not obvious you're going to win, and they may be willing to stab you later on, or may not be able to com follow through with that victory, even if it looks like it'll be there. The combat wheel, really brilliant idea. I love the... Uh, I am committing this much. I will lose this much to win the battle. I think that's a very, very cute, diceless system. One of the few that really works well. You don't know if you're going to win or not, but you know you're going to lose so much. Uh, and in something this abstracted, <coughs> I think it works very well. I, I, I wouldn't want to do this kind of combat, say, with a block game or something like that, where you decide, yeah, I'm going to commit four of my five units, whatever, in, in, in something um, with a little more detail. I think I'd rather allow a little bit more randomness in something like that. But in this kind of diplomacy type game, it seems to work very, very well. Uh, with, uh, well, let's look at the components. So my game obviously is, you know, nearly, probably around 30 years old. The box is beat up. I had to retape it because this was something I carried with me. The map, like I said, intuitive, very, very useful, very nice uh, little design. The only thing that I am iffy about is player seating order. Um, if you even if you randomize that, and with the fact that the turn order gets randomized, what's kind of screwy with it is there is some okay. That guy's on my left. I want to ally with him because of that, which can kind of create some dynamics. Uh, the rules themselves, although they're short and fairly easy, they're kind of presented poorly in some ways, uh, which is to say, first of all, dividing it up into a basic game, then an advanced game that changes some of the rules, uh, and, and optional rules kind of squeezed in, and you kind of have to put that all together. You can't just read one rule set and say, yeah, this is it. But it's fairly short. It's eight pages of rules. It's a simple game. But then some of the rules, every card, uh, every card is covered on here. Everybody's got a copy of this. And then advanced powers are covered here because there was no room to put them, I guess, on the little player boxes. This can be kind of disturbing, especially to newer players. They don't remember to look at everything. That's kind of a an issue. And then when you get to the expansions, that only um, exacerbates the situation because, yeah, you know, some of the cards aren't on there, they're on here. The cards are a big issue in and of themselves, too. Kind of, the counters are, are perfectly fine. Uh, but the cards are kind of a situation that causes a problem. They're kind of flimsy. Um, Certainly if you sleeved them, but there weren't sleeves back in that day, and I'm not into that anyway. And then the biggest complaint I have is that the expansion and presumably uh, the second edition of Dune were printed in a different color background, which means that I can't mix my expansion cards in and not have them bloody obvious without putting some kind of back sleeve or something into play. But that's fun. Uh, this game just... You know, it, 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 it's so such a different system from any other game that I've seen in so many ways in terms of uh, spelling out, you know, uh, what you can and can't do in terms of deals with other players. That's very nice. Most games didn't tend to limit you that way. And again, that kind of lack of limitation in other games led them to a sort of dull and dry and tasteless manner where 
so many games played out where you're just playing the sequence and you can do so much to help each other. The multiplayer uh, win, again, puts you in this position where, yeah, it's cool to win alone, but it's very hard. Uh, now, I feel that the original victory conditions, where they say you just need three locations and any number of players can agree to that, that never works well in my mind. That's too much of a, okay, well, three players can just kind of declare a victory, basically, by making an alliance. There's a chance for the other players to come in. But by adding to the amount of um, cities that you have to take, it makes even, uh, even a shared victory a difficult thing to do. It's almost impossible to win alone in a full six-player game. So just put that out of your mind, unless you get really lucky at some point. We saw with this initial starting position where one player had a lot of power, they still couldn't do it even with an alliance, right? Uh, so you have that kind of... You're raising the bar on the victory conditions, but not so much that it remains as hard as winning it alone. All the same, if I were playing this in some sort of tournament type situation, I would be thinking, well, if somebody wins it alone, they get like a full point. They get a half point if they win it shared with someone. Even with that harder condition, they get a third of a point sharing with two people. And, uh, well, a four-player alliance would be impossible, right? Because there's only five cities. So then you could keep some sort of score for that in that sort of sense. How it would compare, you know, if you played lots of games in that kind of uh, division, I'm not sure. The other, uh, when I was running this for a tournament, the way I did it was a three-round tournament. First game was basic game. Introduce everybody to the game, allow them to play it. Second, you know, even if they, they'd never played before. Second round would be add the advanced and optional rules. Maybe even throw in the space gamer thing, but I didn't want to do that because I have two sets and only one set of the space gamer cards. And then the third and final round, one table of it, would be uh, playing it out. And those would be the people who had scored the best on the first two s tournaments. I had like three boards available to me, actually, because I had borrowed one. Um, that would have been the whole caboot with, uh, you know, with Spice Harvest to set it up and, and just totally shake everything up. And then the duel to add this additional... Uh, wow factor of you've got one potent leader and that really changes the game who you can put into play get you a powerful leader immune to uh, immune to being turned traitor but you lose the game if you lose it you just lose uh, that's a that's a really nice uh, addition there the problem, of course, was I wasn't sure whether Spice Harvest and the Duel would actually work well, but adding the complexity levels to each round seemed really cool to me, and add up the scores so the people in the first round would, uh, you know, maybe be able to walk away with a half a point or something, the way I described it. The people in the second round would come in and be trying to add to that. And I could play the same number of tables in a second round, or I could cut a table. And, but make sure that I have a couple of tables going there. And then the top six people would go and sit on that third table. And that would just be a winner or winners take all uh, type situation. But who knows, because we had one prize for the tournament. So maybe there would have to be a metagame in there that would say, okay, look, if you win, alone on that first game you win. But then the question becomes who has the highest scores among the winners to make a placement among them <laughs> from the prior rounds, which would be kind of an interesting tiebreaker or something. It still wouldn't be an assurance that you get uh, a full a full control of, uh, of the thing. What about the expansion stuff? Because I really had a worry that they would break the game. In a sense, First of all, the duel just kind of adds uh, a, f oops, a feeling of, 
a nice little piece added to the game that you probably wouldn't want to use every time you play it. But gives you some additional options. The problem with that one is, Canley can be used to really decimate the other player's stuff, but I don't know if that's that, if the threat of Canley's is enough to really crush uh, their ability to sort of continue playing. Worst comes to worst, you take them down to one good leader who they can't play again in another battle, but not having a leader essentially gives you a cheap hero, cheap heroine advantage, which means, hey, I'm okay in a lot of ways. You know, I can still play this out uh, perfectly fine, and actually a weakness is taken away from my situation. A weakness that requiring someone to have a leader present means that they may have to put somebody who's subject to treachery up there. There are times when you would rather not have a leader in there. You'd rather not have somebody killed to give extra spice to someone. So that can give you some options, but the order of play of the battles becomes important, so you may not get to put the you may not get to put your one leader in the battle that counts because of that that particular uh, dynamic. Let's see. What about Spice Harvest? Spice Harvest is the more potentially destabilizing. Although it is the duel that ruined the game in the one game that I saw Dan I totally screwed with where it ended on turn two. <laughs> with a couple of players knocked out. And all kind of problems there. Spice Harvest can give somebody a tremendously potent setup. It tends to be the case that the manager does very well. How much is he worth bidding on? That's hard to tell because you could get caught in a lie on the first uh, first harvest and not get anything out of it and be hosed. And I've seen that happen a lot of times because you bid big on it thinking I'm going to make lots of money and you don't. So I kind of think that it's something I wouldn't want to bid a lot on. But I would look at it as the Freeman took it in the game that I played as something that could strongly influence your starting position. But so what? I mean... If you walk into a game like this with enough players, okay, in a tour, in like a three-player game, playing with Spice Harvest, I think is goofy. In a two-player game, even more so. Two-player rules say you have to take four sieges, though. A two-player game with it is just ridiculous. But a three-player game, even, I think Spice Harvest is too potentially unbalanced. But if you're walking into a six-player game with people with all those powers. Uh, who can ally together to knock you out from your winning position, even if they can't win using my option, uh, and one that several other people use as well, to uh, re reduce the victory, uh, increase the requirement for victory condition based on the number of players in the alliance. I think the power politics of the game will preserve the positioning in such a way that someone's not going to be in a, in a position where they have a guaranteed win. They could be doing really well, but even if they have all the money and, and, and all the troops, players are going to start with their starting money. You're going to have ten bucks each on certain powers. That's enough, maybe, to force things. Someone would have to run the bank in Spice Harvest, and that's tough to do. Other players are going to be able to get cards. You're not going to be able to completely dominate Spice Harvest unless they're completely out of it. <laughs> you know? uh, so yeah, I, I think uh, the risk though with the Duel and Spice Harvest together is people can feel that they have little chance because of the starting position and decide to take that big risk, get knocked out even so, and end up Reducing the number of players to the point that there aren't enough powers, there aren't enough pieces, there isn't enough cash to be able to stop the dominating position. And I think that's what we saw in the one game. It, when I'm playing it, being careful, being a little uh, conservative, not risking your big leader if you can help it, if you think there's anything reasonable there, then I don't think the duel really 
completely destabilizes the game. I think the dynamics of the alliance system and uh, of the way the money and the power kind of accumulates prevents any one person from making a grab even when they're very powerful. Now what does make the game ugly are battles. All right. So we saw that the victory in my game happened because the powers were worn down. And I think there's a danger in the game with people playing the base game too conservatively, no matter whether or not Spice Harvest or the Duel is in it. If you play that too conservatively, people build up a power base and they never really attack. Uh, if they can't come to an agreement of, I think we've got a chance of winning this, the game may drag out way too long without much happening. Again, Depends on the players you have, how much they like it, and what they're willing to do. But a couple of players willing to go all out and help bent to try to win it, I think they've got a good shot at it, even if everyone else is playing kind of conservatively. Uh, the different powers, the way they interact, the way they work, you know, that it's just, uh, it, it, it all pieces together very nicely. Do I think that it's completely balanced? No, not at all. I think the Emperor, for example, in the base game at least, and in most games of it, tends to be too weak. His power... Cards don't usually go for a lot, because people need money to fuel their, their military activities. Uh, the only place where they do go for a lot is when a huge card that's really important comes up. But quite often they go for a couple bucks each which just isn't going to fuel uh, your position too much. The guild, though, quite often gets a big boost early on because people want to land a lot of troops, but then they no longer have troops. So that uh, inflow of cash kind of filters and kind of uh, gets cut off as the game goes on. If people have their troops on the board, it goes away completely if you're playing that conservative game. On the other hand, some of the powers, the Harkonnen's power to grab an extra treachery card each each time, to have the extra traders, all that. That's going to be in the game for a long time, but as traders begin to get revealed, uh, it becomes weaker. People learn who the Harkonnen have gotten as traders, right? If the game lasts that long. Quite often, it, I've found it ends in the first few turns, because people really do want to push for that victory. Uh, and then if you start looking at some of the others, the Bene Gesserit and, and, and the Atreides have such potent abilities in combat to control, I'm going to kill your, your leader. You know, you're not going to get that bonus. Uh, of course, the Harkonnen's ability is even more po powerful in some ways, but usually a player will have one leader of their own they know is safe that they can put up against the Harkonnen. And they have weak leaders that they don't think somebody else will pick. It'd be really funny for someone to pick a low-powered leader just to try to sandbag that uh, and, and get that victory at a weird point. I, I don't think I've seen that. I've seen somebody uh, take a lower-ranked leader at one point, but they didn't get to use it because they took a middling rank instead of the lowest rank. Um, just... I don't know. This, it, I think this game develops differently in so many so many times that I've played it, but then Spice Harvest is the way to shake up that beginning. If you play too much of Dune, Spice Harvest is sort of, I think, the most, one of the coolest ways, because it's saying, let's just shake up that whole starting position and go back in time a little bit and allow people to be positioned differently at the beginning of the game. I don't think it completely destabilizes the game, although some of the powers are balanced by the fact that they have a great deal of force on the planet at the beginning. The Harkon and the uh, Atreides, they have a lot on the board at the beginning. The Freeman? Doesn't matter. They can bring as much as they like on. The only thing they have at the beginning of the standard game that's kind of special is they're away from their starting location, so they can make grabs for, say, two exceech fairly easily at the beginning of the game with setup that they can't match when Spice Harvest is there. Spice Harvest gives a tremendous ability for a power like the Bene Gesserit to start out with a good good starting location, or the Emperor, or the Guild, these people who don't have a lot of troops on the board and might not have the easiest time getting them. Anyway, all in all, this is definitely one of my favorite games uh, of this like kind of diplomacy 
variant with a lot of little clever systems in it. It's not the simple game, or the trivially simple game that Diplomacy is, although that's a lot of fun, too. Uh, and it really does come down to, this doesn't come down to pure Diplomacy. Uh, this also comes down to being able to figure out how to use your cards in very much a Cosmic Encounter type way. It doesn't have the chaos of a Cosmic Cosmic Encounter, at least when you throw all the expansions into it, is just this wildly huge thing. You get the feeling the expansions for Dune kind of were heading in that direction, but there just wasn't... They didn't add enough. They, didn't, they weren't as needed. The original Dune was so good that you don't really need that extra gravy on. Whereas with Cosmic Encounter, they kept putting out more and more because those expansions did add so much. The base game was too small. Anyway, great game. Uh, I have no idea about Mercator Rex. I've heard people say it's just not as good. I've heard somebody say it's not as or I've read somebody say it's not as good because of the theme. I don't see where that should matter, but I can tell you the board would matter. And I do know they tweaked a couple of rules. Supposedly it was supposed to just be a, a, a port over. Maybe they Eurofied it a little bit more. I don't know. But this is just an incredibly clever uh, design and one that nobody made anything like since, except for presumably its clone. <laughs>